tutorial, we're going to learn to make these mittens. These are thrummed mittens. You can see there's a design on the outside and there's a little bit of wool roving, wool batting on the inside to make them about the warmest gloves in the world. There may be gloves designed by engineers for people climbing Mount Everest, but these are a close sec second. Probably the warmest thing you can knit for your hands for sure. Uh, if you'd like to get your copy of the pattern to follow along, click the little I in the upper right-hand corner. That'll take you to my website where you can see all the materials that you need and you can get your pattern and I'll list out and link to everything that you see in the video. This pattern is sized for uh, kids and women and men, three different sizes. Um, and you can accommodate any length of hand. They're knit with bulky yarn, so they knit up pretty quickly. And I'm going to use double-pointed needles. I prefer to use double-pointed needles when I knit these, but if you're comfortable with Magic Loop, that's fine, but you'll probably want to switch to double-pointed needles when you knit the thumb. I wish that I had some mittens like this. I can't stop gesturing with my hands. I wish I had some mittens like this as a kid uh, living in Alaska, because when you're playing in the snow, your hands get really cold, and these mittens will keep your hands not only really warm, but, but dry inside. Um, I was just wondering how they do in the wind, but I think your hands are pretty insulated on the inside. Um, roving and the yarn, this is bulky wool. You definitely want to use 100% wool and 100% wool roving, no superwash, because this stuff want, needs to felt together a little bit to really make the, the mittens ideal. And roving comes in all kinds of colors and some marbled colors, and the bulky wool comes in all kinds of colors. And I think it's kind of fun to see what you can put together, you know, the different roving and wool combinations. And I've also seen some finished, uh, some finished mittens, um, I just happened to see when I did a Google image search where someone had done different colors of, of thrumming all the way up the mitten so it kind of faded in ombre style. I didn't have that much roving to work with, but I still think it'd be fun to work and do all these different things um, and try it out and see how the color combinations look together. Um, so if you want to get your copy of the pattern and your bulky yarn and your roving, um, oh, one more thing I want to mention. Last week I put out a video that was just a short technique video on thrumming. I'll give you a link if you click the, the little I in the upper right hand corner. There'll be a link there to that video and if you want to practice thrumming before you start on a project, I give instructions for knitting up a swatch that includes some thrums and you can, you can practice thrumming before you start. But as far as this pattern goes, we are going to get started with double pointed needles and the cast on and I'm going to have to take these off and I don't want to, but that's coming up next. We are ready to get started on the mittens and I want to show you what a fin, I'm going to give you a close up of what one of the finished mittens looks like on the inside and the out. So let's take a look. Here is the mitten that I was just wearing. And the outside, it has like this nice, this nice pattern in, in the mitten. And on the inside, it's crazy. There's just this wool batting all over the place. And this is actually, I've, I've worn the mittens a little bit, and it's actually kind of felted down now. And it will felt down and mat down into the glove and not be this crazy. But you can see why it's warm. There's just so much batting in there going on, keeping keeping the hands insulated from the outside world, from the cold, cold world. Anyway, I ended up putting it back on again. I really like wearing them, and it's 70 degrees in Texas today, so they're not doing me any good. So what I have here are my DPNs and my, um, my bulky yarn, and we're going to get started with the cuff, and the cuff is just straight two by two rib, but if you haven't used double pointed needles before, I will get you started on that. You have the option of casting all the stitches onto one needle and transferring them over, but I like to cast them on um, one at a time, get them right there on the needle, and I'll show you how I do it. Uh, take the working yarn and put my thumb on the yarn and flip, and, and do that right next to the other needle. Take an empty needle and put it in that loop, wrap the needle and pull it through and tighten it up and you are on to the next needle. And I'll give you a link here to, or I'll give you a link if you click the I in the upper right hand corner, give you a link to my long tail cast on video, which shows the long tail cast on the way that I like to work it. I think I get the best tension working it this way. I 
think you have the best control. Okay. You'll follow the pattern for the size that you're knitting. I just have a little sample going on here to show you the techniques. So once you have everything cast on, you are ready to get going. And this is a quick review of using double pointed needles and getting started with double pointed needles. Set yourself up so that you have kind of an H going with the needles and your working yarn is over here on the, the whoops, just through my needle. Got it. Working yarn is, is um, over here on the, the right leg of the H. And so your first stitch is going to be here. Now the goal with this is to keep everything from getting twisted up and crazy. You wanna make sure all of the knots are nicely lined up on the inside. And I'm going to flip this around so that the first stitch is in front of me. And without really, without really picking everything up off the table, I have an empty needle in my right hand. I'm gonna go through that first stitch, grab the working yarn, and now pick it up and wrap that needle and pull it through. And you're joined. Everything is joined in the round. We can start working. And this is knit two, purl two rib. So I'll knit two, yarn forward to purl two, yarn back to knit two. And I give you instructions for arranging, arranging the stitches on the needle so that um, it, whoops, in such a way so that you always start with knit two on every new needle. And then when there are no more stitches left on that needle, you take the empty needle from your left hand, put it in your right, and your next stitch is always to the left of the working yarn. There's my working yarn, there's my next stitch, and knit onto the empty needle in my right hand. And that is how to get started on double pointed needles and how to work knit two P2 rib. I've listed this pattern as an intermediate pattern because it is, it's kind of a lot to throw in working thrums into a pattern when you have, if you've never knit mittens before, or if you're not very experienced at knitting. Um, but if you're an intermediate knitter, chances are you have st started with double pointed needles before and worked two by two rib. So I hope you don't mind the review. Anyway, I just worked one round there because I was talking. Really what I wanna do is to get started on the gusset, the thumb gusset. Here's the finished mitten. We have some gradual increases happening here and here to get us uh, this extra fabric that we need for this part of the thumb. And that's what we're going to do. Of course, this is spelled out row by row in the pattern. After you work the two by two rib, you will work one plain stockinette round and increase one. I hope I'm gonna have enough yarn for this. You're going to increase one at the end of the round. I, I kind of want to get this done so the thrums look right when we get started on the thrums, but I'm I always leave myself a little bit of yarn for these samples. I'm not sure that I've left myself enough yarn. I might have to attach another ball of yarn. Oh, I don't know what I was worried about. I'll be fine. Okay. At the end of this, almost at the end of this round, the, with just one stitch left on the needle, I'm going to make one. And you can make one right or make one left. It's totally up to you. I prefer make one left. I'm gonna pick up the bar between the two stitches, put my left needle in there from the front to the back, get my needle in through the back loop of that stitch, knit it and pull it through, and I've just increased one stitch. Okay, so we've increased one stitch and we are ready to place markers and get started on the thrums and get started on the thumb gusset. So this round is an important round in the mittens because it's thumbs and thrums. So the pattern's really clear about where you put the thrums. I'm going to knit up to my first one. 
And there are lots of different ways of adding thrums to your work. This is the one, after trying a bunch of different ways, this is the one that I found is the best. Put your needle into the stitch below and just leave it there because we're going to focus on roving for a minute. I have this roving here and normally when I start a round of uh, a thrum round, I normally pull out a few different bits of roving and set it next to me and I'll have them ready. I like to do that. It's totally up to you if you want to pull it out for each one. You want to hold on to the roving kind of high so that it will pull out naturally without too much fuss. And there is the little bit of roving that I'm going to use. I'm going to pull out a few. And like I said, there's the, the video I have on thrumming, the separate technique video, talks more about the different staple lengths and um, how much you need for a thrum. And I've found that sometimes I pull out more and sometimes I pull out less and it doesn't really make much of a difference. I will add some to it if it seems really light or take some away if it seems really heavy. But I have, you'll see here that I have some that are heavier and some that are lighter and they're not going to make a difference in the finished mitt. There is something in the roving here that I, there we go. Okay. Anyway, back to my knitting. My needle is in the stitch below. I'm going to take a bit of the roving and twist it up. It'll come untwisted, but it's nice, it's easier to work this way. Fold it in half and pop it over the back needle. Then pull that through like a normal stitch, but don't pull the old stitch off the left needle. Put the needle into that stitch. Use the working yarn to wrap the back needle. Then just one more step, bind off the thrum stitch over the last stitch you knit and tighten it up. And you can see, ta-da, little roving stitch. Knit up to the next one. I'll show you this a couple of times here. There's the stitch below. Put my needle into the stitch below. This is one of the reasons I like double pointed needles because you kind of get this little tripod effect and it holds it there. Take the roving, twist, twist, twist. Fold it in half. Pop it over the back needle. Pull that through like a normal stitch, leaving the old stitch on the left needle. Put your needle in there, wrap it with the working yarn, and then bind off the roving stitch over the other stitch and give it a little tug. You don't need to tug it like crazy, because you definitely want it to look good on the front, but there, you have some, you're able to adjust it if you do over pull. You watch me work a couple more of these. Whoops, I lost it. Now every row isn't roving, so it's just once every few rows you work a roving where they take a little bit longer to work. Whoops, I don't think I bound up. I didn't work the last part of that stitch. If you see a roving stitch on the needle, you didn't work the last part of it. There we go. I'm actually thinking ahead to the next part, if you can't tell. Okay, a couple more stitches and then we're going to get started on the thumb gusset. And so to get started with the thumb gusset, I'm going to need a couple of stitch markers. So I put that on there because we're going to want to mark those stitches. Then I'm going to do a make one left, just like I did on the last round. Pick up the yarn between the two stitches. Put my left needle in from front to back. I like to put my right needle in the front and roll it over to the back to get my needle in to the back loop of that stitch. Wrap it and pull it through. So I just increase by one. And now I want to thrum. There's so much going on right here. Place a marker, make one, do a thrum. Okay, and now I want to make one right. I pick up the yarn between the two stitches, put my left needle in from back to front, and then knit the stitch normally through the front loop. Okay. 
and then place a marker and you'll continue on following the pattern you'll continue on for the rest of the round with um, <coughs> excuse me with knitting the thrums and usually what I like to do is to finish a row and then finish the following row and then I can really get a look at the thrums and see if I need to tighten them up or anything there's no disaster you can actually go back even when the mitten is completely finished and tighten up a thrum or if it looks too tight you can always just put a needle in to loosen it up a little bit like that again the pattern is written out row by row for the whole thumb gusset for each size I definitely want to show you the techniques though so you can see how it's worked um, you want to finish uh, follow the instructions to finish the thumb gusset and up next we are going to reserve the thumb stitches Once you finish the thumb gusset, you want to, or we're going to reserve those stitches, and then the last thing we do when we're making these mittens is go back and knit the thumb separately. But for now, we're going to reserve the stitches and then continue knitting the hand. Let's go ahead and take a look. I am ready on this little mitten to reserve the thumb stitches, and you're going to have a lot of stitches between the markers at this point. And, um, well, yeah, let's just do it. This is actually a thrum round, but I'm not going to do the thrums on this round because I just want to get to the technique. So I'm just going to straighten it and not put thrums in. Knitting up to the marker is what I'm doing. Okay, you get up to this marker, remove the stitch marker, and take a piece of scrap yarn in a different color and a tapestry needle, and slip all of the stitches between the two markers onto the scrap yarn. And those are your thumb stitches, and they are just going to hang out on this scrap yarn until you come back to them. So now we have, you see how this is? All the thumb stitches are there. Our last stitch, let me get this better. Our, the last stitch we knit was here. Our next stitch is there. It's kind of a long distance, but you see they can squish together no problem. But I am going to cast on one stitch over the gap. I'm going to use the backwards loop cast on to do that. I take the working yarn in my right hand, put my thumb, or working yarn, this is not my right hand, this is my left hand. <laughs> I take the working yarn in my left hand, put my thumb on the yarn and flip, then put the needle into that loop on my thumb and tighten it up. You see, I've cast a stitch on, it's kind of a lame cast on stitch. It's really the only cast on that we can use in this case, but um, it doesn't have a knot under it or anything, but it works in this case. And then I am just going to continue working the rest of this round which, like I said, is a thrum round. I'm just not thrumming as I show you these techniques. But I want to show you what this looks like with the reserved thumb stitches. We actually have something that is beginning to resemble a mitten. You can see how it would fit on a hand, at least. There's the thumb, and we're going to knit up the rest of the hand. And when you do, bring you'll have something that looks like this. I have a little tiny mitten here that has a lot of batting in it right now. The, the thumb stitches are reserved and I'm ready to, oh, let me back up a sec. You'll knit the hand the length that you need it, and this is all spelled out in the pattern, and then you have some shaping to do at the top. And the last thing, and that's written out row by row in the pattern as well, the last thing we want to do is kitchener stitch and graft these stitches together. So I cut the yarn leaving about a 12 inch tail. I didn't need to leave it that long, but I did. And take your tapestry needle line up these stitches on two double pointed needles and the first two stitches I'm going to do are going to be setup stitches. I'm going to go into the stitch on the front needle as if to purl and the back needle as if to knit. Now I'm all set up. Now there's four steps to this and this is what I say to myself when I do it. There are, you, you work front needle, front needle, back needle, back needle. This is what it looks like knit, off, 
pearl, pearl, off, knit. That's the sequence. Knit, off, pearl, pearl, off, knit. And after you finish the four stitches, the four steps, you can really give it a tug. Knit, off, pearl, pearl, off, knit. Knit off, pearl, pearl off, knit. And when you get to the last two, just knit off, pearl off. Ta-da. You can tighten it up and then stretch it back out again a little bit. Everything's kind of square and awkward looking at this point, but you, as soon as you get a hand in there, everything puffs up. What do we have next? Okay, next up we are going to knit the thumb um, and I'll show you how to fix the gap at the thumb and how to treat the thrums inside. We are ready to get started on the thumbs. <laughs> I'm thinking, don't get confused between thumbs and thrums. They sound a lot alike. We're going to knit the thumb part of the mitten. Let's go and take a look. Last we left off, you had the hand finished and we have these stitches held on scrap yarn. So you're gonna take your double pointed needles and transfer those stitches onto the double pointed needles. You just go in as if to purl. And the pattern tells you exactly how many to put on each needle for the size that you're knitting. To make, the, to make it easier when we get into shaping the thumb. You know what I don't have is yarn. That's probably important. Now I have yarn. Okay. <laughs> now this is kind of a mess. You can see if you're, um, it's, it's not going to be a mess in a minute, but you can see it's so few stitches. If you're using magic loop, it, you're probably going to have an easier time working with double pointed needles than with the magic loop. Um, this is a little trick that I always do. Anytime I'm knitting the thumb on gloves or mittens, I always start here. I always start at the, the crook of the thumb here. That's always the beginning of my round. And I don't have to mess with stitch markers or anything because I always know that this is the beginning of my round. So that's going to be my first stitch. I'm going to put my needle into that stitch, grab my working yarn, wrap it, and I grabbed the working yarn and folded it over and took that loop, wrapped the back needle and pull it through and I have attached the yarn. There's just a couple things going on here. The first row is actually a thrum row, but I'm not going to be working thrums, so I want to show you the techniques used. The thumbs go really quickly there. <laughs> there just aren't a lot of stitches here. Okay, once you get to the last stitch, you know, one little thing we want to do, which is to pick up, pick up a stitch over the gap. And you remember we cast on a stitch right there, and we can pick up a stitch from about the same area. But when you're looking at this, you want to try to pick, pick it up from an area where it's not going to stretch out like crazy. Like if you pick up that, this one strand right here, that's certainly going to stretch out. That's going to make a big hole. I'm thinking that, I'm thinking that this will be a good place to pick up a stitch because I'll pick up a couple strands there. But I'm going to pick it up and I'm, then I'm going to take a look and see how it looks. And pull that through and then give it a tug. And that looks pretty good. For bulky yarn, I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to tie the working yarn to the tail end. And then just keep going around. I'll follow the instructions and add the thrums where I need them. And then eventually, 
there'll be some decreases to shape it. I will tell you this, don't get super hung up on where the thrums are going when you're knitting the thumb. The thumb doesn't really need a lot of them because it's not a very big piece. And don't add any thrums to the hand shaping or the thumb area in a decrease stitch. Just work the decrease stitch without a thrum in it and you'll end up adding a thrum later and it'll all work out fine. I did not get too hung up on it and everything turned out fine. So the last thing I want to show you is this dreaded gap because anytime you're changing directions in knitting, you are going, you know, the same thing, we get them in socks. We change direction and we end up with this massive hole here and we've got to close that up, but luckily we have this end here from the thumb where we attach the yarn for the thumb. So I have my tapestry needle and it's easiest, this glove is so tiny and there's so much fluff inside. But it's easy if you, if you can get the glove on, then you can see exactly, am I leaning into the picture? Because I'm really trying to get a good, good close up. This mitten's too small for me. Um, I am just going to whip stitch, is it called whip stitch? Whip stitch around, making sure it looks good to close up this hole. If it doesn't look good, I'm just going to take the stitch out and try again. So I'm going to go through two stitches over here and a V over here and a V over here. So far, so good. It is looking pretty good. That looks good. Each stitch I'm evaluating. That one did not work. I actually created a bigger hole. But this is the way it goes. You just watch every stitch. There isn't like a super tried and true formula because when you're changing directions in knitting, you know, some different things, you might have a tighter stitch or a looser stitch. So you wanna always take a look. Now I'm here. Ah. Ta-da, that looks really good. I am happy with that. I can just weave in the end. That gap is closed. Oh, this mitten's way too small for me. <laughs> and we are done with the mittens. Oh, there is one more thing I wanna show you. Well, actually, I can just talk to you from here. We don't have to take a close up. Um, when, the, when, the, when you're completely finished with the mitten, you will have something crazy like I showed you at the beginning of the video where all of this stuff is just fuzzy and crazy all over the place. This is what I did to get them fitting really well. Turn them inside out and just straighten the thrums out a little bit. If they're, a lot of them will be tangled together and because they've been kind of felting together the whole time you've been knitting, but just kind of straighten them out and um, they'll look even crazier for a bit. And then take the iron, take um, just a regular steam iron, and without pressing down, just kind of blast steam into the, into the uh, thrums, and then just kind of smash them down, and that will help everything start the felting process and compacting down so it's not crazy. I'm thinking that especially if you're giving these gloves as a gift to a kid, um, they're gonna have a tougher time getting their hand through it when, if it's all super crazy like this. And then once you get that done, once you felt it down, on this mitten, I just spent, you know, maybe 60 seconds total steaming it and felting it down. You can see I have something much more compact here, and it would be much easier for me to hand this mitten to a kid. They'd be able to get their hand inside. But eventually with wear, all of this really mats down, and you end up with just a super warm, thick mitten. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy making these. Please post your pictures to Ravelry and um, tag the pattern. And I always check and look at people's finished objects. I really like to see them. Good luck.